Good morning. We will pay attention to transactions with debtors today. They provide balances at the end of April for the debtors control bank and inventory and then transactions in May. The balances will appear on the debit side of the ledger accounts because debtors, bank and inventory are all assets and assets always have debit balances. Sold goods to be a declare for 10,000 less 20% trade discount. A profit of 25% was made on the sales price. So the first thing that we have to do here is to calculate what is our sales price and what is the cost price. We give them 20% trade discount, therefore the normal sales price will be 100%, trade discount is 20, sales price is 80. The normal sales price equals 10,000 rand. So if I want to calculate the trade discount, I will work out 20% of the 10,000 that will give me 2,000 rand. So we are selling the goods at a reduced price of 8,000. Although we are giving them trade discount, it will not affect our cost price because we still have to pay the same amount to our suppliers. And how did we originally get the sales price? We added it to our original cost price. So if we work out what is the cost price, we must use the 10,000, the total sales price, because that is connected to the cost price. Sales price is 100% because they say it's profit on sales price. So sales price is 100, profit is 25, Therefore, the cost price must be less and will be 75. They give us the sales price, the normal sales price, as 10,000. So, therefore, we will take the 10,000 times 75% to work out the cost price. Why do we use 75%? Because the profit was made on sales price. Sales price is 100 Cost price is 75% of the sales price. In the general ledger, we will first of all show the balances that was provided. So debtors is an asset. Assets increase on the debit side, decrease on the credit side. Inventory is an asset, so the balance will be on the debit side. And because we increase inventory on the debit side and decrease it on the credit side. We sold goods on credit now at a reduced price because we granted um, trade discount. So the debtors will not owe us 10000 They will owe us 8000 So we will record the amount after this trade discount was deducted. And the income that we will have that will increase the profits will be 8000 we credit the 8000 in the sales account because income increases on the credit side and decreases on the debit side. For the inventory, we will show that the cost price of the inventory is 7500 Cost of sales is the expense. Expenses increase on the debit side and decrease on the credit side. We've sold inventory, so we decrease our inventory to show that we don't have that 7,500 anymore. In the accounting equation, we will show that we issued an invoice to the debtor when we sold the goods to them. We recorded it into the debtor's journal. The debtors increase on the debit side because they increase the assets of the business. Sales is an income. Income increases on the credit side. Will increase my profit, so equity increases with the 8,000. On that same invoice and in the debtors journal, we will also record the cost of sales. Cost of sales is the expense. Expenses increase on the debit side. Expenses decrease profit, so my equity will decrease. Inventory is an asset. 
we reduce the inventory on the credit side because I've got less assets. B declared return goods with a normal sales price of a thousand rand. So because we allowed in 20% trade discount when we sold the goods, on this normal sales price we will also deduct the 20% because we're not going to give him a thousand rand back. He didn't pay 10,000, he paid 8,000. But when we calculate the cost of sales, we must calculate it on the thousand rand. The normal sales price is 100% equals a thousand rand. Trade discount is 20% of that normal sales price, so that gives me. 200 rand. So we will reduce the 1000 rand with 200 rand to show that we will deduct the discount as well. And the sales price that he actually originally paid was 800 rand. So the entry will be recorded for the 800 because that is the discount that we will allow him. On the Cost of sales, we have to calculate on the full thousand rand. So this sales price was originally a thousand rand. We determined the sales price on our original cost price. So if we want to know what is the cost price, we will work out 75% of that thousand and that will give me 750 rand. The debtors control will be reduced with 800 rand because originally when we sold it, we increased them with 8,000 after the discount. Now we decrease them with 800 after the trade discount was taken into account. And debtors allowances will be debited with the 800. So debtors allowances and sales forms one account. This is where I increase my income and in debtors allowances, I decrease my income. At the end of the year, we will transfer the debtors allowances to the sales to reduce my sales. So debtors allowances decreases my profits. The inventory came back, so inventory will be increased on the debit side with 750 and cost of sales will be credited with 750 to decrease the cost of sales because our expense is less. Remember, cost of sales means the cost price of goods already sold. So if they return goods, those goods are not sold and we have to cancel that original entry and show that the cost of sales is less. In the accounting equation, we will show that we issued a credit note to our debtor. We record any allowances to debtors in the debtors allowances account. We want to cancel that original sales and show that the sales must decrease. So we will debit debtors allowances and debtors allowances will therefore decrease my equity. Debtors control will be credited and that will decrease my assets because now the debtors owe me less money. On this same credit note that we issue, we will show that the inventory increases, so the assets increase with 750. The cost of sales decreases because the goods are not sold. If the expense decreases, profit go up, so therefore the equity will increase. What's very important here is to realize that an invoice and a credit note is used in connection with debtors and creditors. If it is invoice issued or credit note issued, it is in connection with debtors. If it's invoice received or credit note received, it is in connection with creditors. Received a check from B declared for 1,800 after 10% discount was allowed. So they don't tell me how much money 
of the total debt he's reducing, they tell me how much is the amount that I received. So first of all, I'm going to do a calculation to determine how much discount is granted on this 1,800 rand. The total debt is 100%. The discount is 10%. So the receive amount is 90%. They tell us that the money that we received was 1,800. So that 90% that we received equaled 1,800. If we want the discount, it means that we want to calculate the percentage 10 divided by the percentage that we know 90. So we will multiply 1,800 with 10, the one that we want to know, Divide by 90, the one that we know, and that will give me 200 rand. The debtors will be credited with the 800, 1,800 that they pay, and they will also be credited with the 200. So we are actually reducing the debtor with 2,000 rand. Then we will have to increase the money in the bank and increase the expense for discount. We will increase the money in the bank because assets increase on the debit side with 1,800. Show that this double entry appears in the debtor's control account. And we will debit discount allowed with 200. Also indicate that this double entry is in the debtor's control account. Discount is the expense. Expenses increase on the debit side and decrease on the credit side. We will issue a receipt to them when we receive the mon money and record it in the cash receipts journal. The bank is debited because assets increase with 1,800. Debtors is credited because assets decrease with 1,800. Then on that same receipt, we will indicate the discount allowed and we will show that the debtors will be credited because the assets decrease and discount allowed is expense and expenses will decrease my equity. Received a check for 600 as a final payment of 60 cents in the rand from the insolvent estate of a NEL. The outstanding amount must be written off. We received 600 rand. So next to the word received, we will show the 600. If the person paid his total debt, he would pay 100%. We only receive 60% of his debt, so the amount that we have to write of his bad debts will be 40% of his debt. Because they give us the received amount, it means I will take the received amount, mul multiply it with the amount that we want to know, 40, divide by the one that we already know, the 60. So the 600 times 40, the one that we want to know, divide by 60, the one that's known to us, and that will give me 400 rand. In the debtors control account, we will indicate that the debtors will decrease with this total amount of 1,000, his total debt, and his account will be closed. The bank account will be debited because we receive money, and we will show in the bad debts account that there's expense for 400 rand. The bank account is debited with the 600. Debtors control was credited. And bad debts will be debited and debtors control credited with the 400 that must be written off. We will receive the money and issue a receipt as proof that the money was received. We record it in the cash receipts journal, debit the bank to increase the asset, decrease debtors control to decrease the asset. Then in the general journal, we will record an entry that we will use a journal voucher as proof why we recorded this entry 
Their debt is debited because expenses increase on the debit side. Expenses decrease as profit, so my equity will decrease. Debtors' control will be credited because they owe us less money, so assets decrease on the credit side. The check that we received from B now on the 13th was returned by the bank due to insufficient funds. That means that the entry that we recorded on the 13th, we have to cancel and change everything that we did on the 13th because we will not give him the discount anymore and we have to show that he owes the amount on the check and the discount to the business. When we received the money, we credited the debtor's control with, with the amount received, 1800 and the discount allowed. If that check is dishonored, we have to cancel that total entry on the debit side. So we will debit the debtors with the 1800 for the money received, and we will debit, debit them with a 200 rand discount that we will cancel now because we will not give discount if we didn't get money. The bank account will be credited with the 1800 so there we cancel the original entry. Discount allowed will be credited with 200 to cancel that original entry. In the accounting equation, we will show that we receive this information on the bank statement. When we receive the money, we recorded it in the cash receipts journal. So if we want to cancel the check, we will record it in the cash payments journal. The debtors owe us the money again, so we will debit the debtors to increase the assets with the amount on the check, 1800 We will decrease the bank amount on the credit side because we don't have the money in the bank anymore. So the assets will decrease with 1800 We will complete the entry in the general journal and use a journal voucher so that we can prove why we cancel the discount. The debtors will be debited <coughs> to increase the amount that they owe us because we're not giving them the discount anymore, so assets will increase with the 200 because we cancel the discount, it means that we reduce expense. If we reduce expense, my profits increase, so I will increase my equity. Charge the account of B. De Clerk with 10 rand interest. So because he didn't pay this check that came back from the bank, we want to increase the amount that he is owing to us because the business is actually financing him until he pays his debt. The account of the debtor will increase on the debit side to increase the total asset because he will now also have to pay the 10 rand and we will credit interest. Interest received is an income. Income increases on the credit side and decreases on the debit side. And we will show that we have an income of 10 rand. The account that was debited was my debtor's control account. Journal voucher will be used and we will record this in the general journal. So the debtors will be debited because we want to increase the debtors and our assets with 10 rand. Interest income will increase profits, so my equity will increase with 10 rand. Issue the receipt to M. Kluter for 80 rand in settlement of an account that was written off during March. That means in March, we wrote of his debt because we thought we will never get the money out of him. If he pays later, it means that we can't record it in the debtor's control account because when we receive the money from him, we closed his account. He hasn't got an account in the business anymore. So we will debit the bank and we will credit bad debts recovered to create an income. We receive 80 rand. If we look at the debtor's control account, when someone is declared insolvent or we decide to write off his debts, 
we credit our debtor's control account with that bad debt. It means that that person doesn't owe the money. If you make a mistake and you enter the money that you receive from him here on the credit side of the debtors, it means that you are actually creating a creditor and then we have to pay the money back. So as soon as someone's debt was written off, you can never put it into his individual account or in the debtor's control afterwards. We will debit the bank to indicate that money was received in the bank and we will credit bad debts recovered because this is now an income to us. Income increases on the credit side. When we write off bad debts, we show it on the debit side because then it's the expense that increases on the debit side and decreases on the credit side. You can't show this bad debt recovered on the credit side here of your bad debts account because bad debts is the expense. Bad debts recovered is an income. We never add the two together in one account. But all your expense accounts are separate accounts from your income accounts. So this bad debt recovered will be shown as an income in your income statement, while the bad debts will be shown as expense in your income statement. We issue a receipt when we receive the money, record it in the cash receipts journal, show that the money in the bank increased, so our assets increase. Bad debts recovered is credited because it's an income, and income will increase profits, so my equity will increase with 80 rand. What did we learn? Debtors increase on the debit side and decrease on the credit side. Bad debts recovered must be credited when the money is received from the debtor after his account was written off. You can never show it in the debtor's account. You must open an income bad debts recovered. When you balance the ledger accounts, you must determine what, which side is the bigger side and the difference between the two sides of the ledger will be the balance in that specific account. If we look at the debtor's control account, debtor's is an asset, so the debit side will always be bigger than the credit side. So I will add up all these figures on the debit side and show what is my total amount on the debit side. Then I will take the 40,010 and subtract all these figures on the credit side so that I can see what is the difference between the debit side and the credit side and the difference between the two sides will give me my balance. That balance means that the debtors still owe us 36,210. The balance is always written above the total to get the two totals to be exactly the same figure. So totals in the ledger must always have the same total and they must be on the same line. That balance that you carry down above the total will be brought down below the total so that you can carry on in your debtor's control account in June with an opening balance of 36,210. If we look at the inventory account, inventory is also the asset, so the debit side will be bigger, and if I add up, I get 40,750 minus the 7,500, that will give me the balance between the debit and the credit side. If I add up the credit side now, these two totals must be equal. And I will bring down that balance on the debit side below the total. So in June, I can start my books and say I start off with inventory valued at 33,250.